connection between female beauty and male infatuation is one of the most regular sequences of cause and effect observable in everyday life. E.H. Carr, What is History? Welcome back, again. Lorenzo doubts that there have ever been knights errant. Again, Don Quixote seems remarkably calm about this error. He says he will pray to heaven for Lorenzo's enlightenment. Don Quixote transforms the actions of a knight into something more like a philosophical attitude. Thus, he sounds conservative at heart, expressing a cynical view of the current state of things. Nowadays, what triumphs because of people's sins is sloth, idleness, gluttony, and hedonism. Similarly, Lorenzo concludes that Don Quixote is crazy, but he still acknowledges that he can learn from him. Our guest has gone off, but even so, he's a gallant madman, and I would be a weak-minded fool not to think so. Notice the tranquility of the scene. What made Don Quixote most content was the marvelous silence which reigned throughout the household. We now turn to Lorenzo's poems. There's something autobiographical about Lorenzo's participation in a literary joust. Some of Cervantes' earliest poetry is from such a competition, and in Zaragoza, no less, the same site of the jousts for the suit of armor in which Don Quixote hopes to participate. Did you know? Cervantes' The Colloquy of the Dogs, written in 1605, is a kind of coded summary of Don Quixote de la Mancha. Lorenzo introduces his first poem with humility. I wrote it solely to exercise my wit. In this specific poetic form, a gloss, the last lines of the stanzas echo the lines of an initial stanza, which is quoted from another poem. The topic here is the quickness of time, tempus fugit in Latin. Moreover, time's relentlessness means that death is a great motivator. Life itself makes me fearful of what will come after time. Don Quixote is thrilled and places Lorenzo in an academic tradition of great poetry from Athens to Paris to Bologna to Salamanca. Lorenzo then recites a sonnet on Pyramus and Thisbe, tragic lovers made famous by Ovid. It's a reworking of an imperialist sonnet by Diego Hernando de Acuña and a beautiful example of the manneristic style but it also echoes the love story of Cardenio and Lucinda and alludes to the wall between the families of Sancho and Tomé Cecial. Further, it anticipates the love story of Quiteria and Basilio in the next chapter. In fact, that straight so narrow which love dares to cross, for love tends to make shallow and easy the way past most difficult things, summarizes every love story in Don Quixote, perhaps most especially that of Biedma and Zoraida, who crossed the ultimate Strait of Gibraltar. Don Quixote is once again thrilled by the artifice of this sonnet. Don Quixote stays four days at Miranda's house before departing for Zaragoza. There's double meaning in the narrator's description of his route. Until the day of the jousts of Zaragoza, which was that of his certain route. The phrase derecha derrota means secure route, but also legitimate route. Which is the most important university in Spain during the time of Cervantes? A. Universidad Francisco Marroquín B. Universidad de San Carlos C. Universidad de Salamanca Correct answer, C. Universidad de Salamanca the irony here is Christian. Don Quixote's destiny is somehow his triumphant defeat. The narrator also anticipates the future episode of the Cave of Montesinos and Don Quixote's impending investigation of the mythical origins of the lakes of Ruidera. Then, Don Quixote's parting words to Lorenzo reiterate the mathematics theme. He alludes to the Pythagorean topic of life as a why, which represents a path that forks between virtue and vice except that in Don Quixote's case, life forks between poetry and knight-errantry. 
Don Quixote then alludes to a famous line from Virgil's Aeneid, one of Cervantes' favorites, one he uses, for example, as the basis for his exemplary novel, The Colloquy of the Dogs. The idea is that knights errant seek to elevate the humble and lower the proud. They are obliged to pardon the wretched and subdue and crush the proud. Miranda and his son remain in awe of Don Quixote's mixed discourse. As our heroes depart, the narrator echoes Don Quixote's perspective. With the kind permission of the lady of the castle, Don Quixote and Sancho, atop Rocinante and the Grey, departed. That's all for now. Be sure and tune in for our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.